picture. Before you start up the measure, very important to change this to millimeters. Um, and we're going to run a parallel version. It'll do it here from the menu. Double precision. Uh, look, you should just do everything in double precision. Um, if you're like, oh, I'm going to use single precision here, kind of save a bit of resources, you know, you should have probably just gotten a new computer. Um, you should be doing all this in double precision. Don't let there be any reason why your results have any sort of question marks over them. Um, so, yeah, double precision. Um, I have eight cores. Do I use all eight cores here? Um, I might just use seven. So these are physical cores. So I'm going to just use seven physical cores and maybe keep one core for recording and whatnot. Sound. Let's boot this guy up. So this is using a Fluence inbuilt measure. So of course it opens on this other screen over here. I'll drag it over. Take a second to load up. Well, actually load it up pretty nip. So here we are, we're in. So you can see my seven processors have loaded up. Cool. Import the geometry. See the units are millimeters because we selected that beforehand. Might take a second. Um, I'll pause this result. Okie doke, so we're all loaded in here. That was basically what happened telling me that I have uh, one geometry with six parts objects and they're the objects that we just labeled there in design modeler telling me that I have all these nodes and faces grand do I want to add local sizings yes I do do drag your menu up here as well give yourself as much to look at as you can all right first thing easy thing to do is start off with the body of influences select BOI one two and three they're for my wheels so I'll call them BOI wheels Around the wheels, I might have a maximum of, oof, might go for, might have 30 millimeters, the biggest cell that can be in the volume mesh around that. So there's two types of mesh. So you have surface mesh, which is along the surface of the wheels, you could imagine, like a kind of spider web all along that. But then off the wheel in the airspace around it, um, there's the volume and that's the volume mesh. So the cells in the volume outside of the wheels here will uh, be restricted to 30 mil. Cool. Now I'm going to call another one um, BOI van trailer because you know that's the one I put around the vehicle BOI near. I could call it just BOI near if I wanted. And I'm going to say that the maximum I'm going to have there is maybe 60 mil around that. Should do it. You can reduce these depending on your computational resources but 60 is pretty decent and 30 mil around the wheels is also pretty decent. Uh, want to do BOI wake, don't I? And then maybe 100 mil in the wake is grand, 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 grand. Get decent results off that. And you can see these are being created as I move along, but keep this menu as big as you can so you can see what's going on. Right, so I've gone through the BOIs there. So there's the bumper. Yep. So I might start naming some of these. So I know the bulk materials in this, so I have, um, the bumper would be kind of bulky, um, large panels. Uh, other things would be the van is, I have a van bulk named, the van and rear is bulky as well. The trailer front, the trailer is bulk. Um, they're all pretty bulky. So I can give them just a straight up face size of 10 millimeters. And I'm just gonna call that bulk because their, their panels aren't that fine. Maybe the trailer front I could do something on, but I'm just gonna call it 10 millimeter, and that'll do. Another type of face sizing you want to do is a curvature. So I'm gonna do the curvature. I just call them wheels, because I have four wheels here, don't I? So I'm gonna say minimum sizing for the curvature of the wheels. Um, might say, have a minimum size of one and a maximum size of 12 and a curvature angle of maybe 16. You should do it for the wheels, back wheel, trailer, front wheel, back wheel, and that'll do. Another thing I want to put a bit of a sizing on would be 
Yeah, so I can do the fine here now. Okay, so I'm going to do a fine curvature for this. It's going to be very fine. So it'll have a, a one max and it'll have only maybe like eight millimeter max. And I only let the curvature angle go to about 14. So what the curvature angle is, hopefully it gives a diagram of it. No, so you can look up what the curvature angle is. It's just the maximum angle between two cells. You know, so uh, for example, uh, oh, yeah a diagram on the internet it better describe that but the smaller i make this the more cells that will occur and the more computational resources so if this was big you'd have big chunky blocks around your wheels but if this angle is quite small there'll be loads of fine little faces all around your wheel to kind of get around so a little google search of that describe that pretty well good but i'm going to keep pushing trying to keep the video length small Right, fine, yeah, select the fine there. Um, that'll do me. So what else needs to be given a name here? So make sure you don't forget any of these as well. BOIs, the bumper, the bumper I would have included in the bulk F wheels, yeah. So most of these are actually done. Side, that's to do with the domain, symmetry. TF wheel, trailer joint, trailer front. Yeah, trailer joint is the only one I haven't really given a name to. Wheel radii, they're quite fine, so I'm going to deal with them separately. So wheel surrounds, they're the only two that I don't think I've mentioned. Um, so I'll add to the Ah, I didn't do that right. So you can come in and edit these. They're, they're pretty easy edit. Revert and edit. So I'm going to call this medium fine. Medium fine, because these are kind of fine. So I might put these down for a one, maybe a one ten, and a curvature angle of sixteen. So you can experiment with that. Uh, I know I definitely did experiment with it quite a bit. So come up here. I still have more of these to add. So I still have wheel radii, and this is quite a fine um, curvature around them. Small radii. So I might go down one five, uh, maybe a fourteen curvature angle. Okay. So I think I've gotten most of them labeled there i'm going to just double check the bulk make sure i have everything there rear to joint yeah okay so that's it right done 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 so create some local sizings which is what i've done there right we're going to generate a surface mesh around this this is just a general now because i've kind of labeled everything in and around the car this is only going to apply to the general domain around that I haven't. I haven't put a restriction sizing on the ground or on the, you know, the the general walls of the domain. So that's where this is going to go. So you always want to go for maybe a minimum size of one and maybe a maximum of 250. You can make it smaller. I, I know I've done simulations with that at maybe a 180 or something. Um, but 250 is grand for this. Curvature and proximity, yeah. And you want to maybe about three cells per gap. So that means, um, you know, wherever there's a gap between two faces, there's going to be three cells in between them, at least. Lovely. So generate that. This usually takes a while now. Um, this this usually takes a while uh, to generate the surface mesh. So I'm going to pause, depending on how many cores you use, how quickly your processor is, and how much RAM you have as well. So definitely if I opened up a uh, task manager there, you'd see that there's a bit of, it's going to start ramping up and it's going to, it's going to have a bit of stuff. So yeah, this hopefully will work out. I'll pause the video and we'll come back in a second. Right. We're back. That took five minutes. Okay. It could take five years in your computer if it's not up to the standard. So let's have a look at a few of the things that came up here. Um, so this is the face count this is how many faces see the faces there are in there and there's also going to be a load of faces on our car um it tells me that they're skewed cells there's five of them that's probably where there's really sharp edges i showed you where that can happen and we're telling that on average things are generally pretty good though down 0 0.02 for the skewness um, but a skewed cell is bad for uh the simulation and, and trying to get a good solution um, so you want to keep this down so it gives me a suggestion how i can improve this in the five that are acting up um 
So let's have a general look here. Just another thing on this face count. I'm going to add something called inflation layers in a minute. Um, if I added roughly eight inflation layers. Yeah, eight inflation layers. It would roughly be eight times two million cells that I'd be dealing with because uh, the inflation layer does account for a lot of the uh, cells in the domains, just to be aware of that. So that's uh, this is a good measure of how many uh, cells that you're going to have, because you're going to take this and multiply it by the number of uh, inflation layers you're going to add. Cool. So before I go on to describe the geometry, I'm going to come in here, insert new task, and I'm going to see, can I improve the surface mesh quality? I'll try to get it down to 0 0.7, see what happens. Let me give that a second. Okie doke, so there we are. So we got a surface mesh quality. Uh, it wasn't reached, but I'm telling you that this is only happening in one or two cells. So that's not big, a big issue, all right? But if it was happening in a hundred different things, there'd be an issue. So in one or two cells, it's not gonna cause that much of an issue. So don't be too tripped out about that. Um, the way I could get around this is, but it takes ages to go back and do it, is create a body of influence around those really fine edges or even rechange the geometry in SolidWorks where this is happening. I can actually, there's ways as well I can go up here to mesh and I can get it to show me where these bad cells are happening and then I can go and fix that. But uh, I'm not too bothered because there's only five of them and I'm only showing you how to do this. If it's something that's causing you trouble, um, you can look up how to do it. But in general, this should be grand. All right, so pushing along, pushing along. So we this is a fluid uh, region only with no voids. Um, change all fluids to internal, uh, nope. And no shared topology, nope. Describe that. Now, see here, I call that an inlet. It realized it was a velocity inlet. So that's why you should give these uh, typical names. Everything here is a wall, except for, see these sky, the side and the sky. Remember we said we call them symmetry planes. Let's change them to symmetry, just so it knows how to mesh them. Um, the ground is a wall, everything there, yes. Yeah. So three symmetries, inlet velocity, yeah. All of them are walls, cool, update boundaries. A fluid, this is only one region, it should be a fluid. That's perfectly done correct. So when you get to here and this is the crack, everything's done well. Right, add the boundary layers, also known as the inflation layers. Right. These are very important and they need to be done correctly. Now what I usually add for my simulations is I add eight boundary layers. I grow them at this rate here. Sorry, I don't use that, I use last ratio. So I use eight boundary layers. This is my growth rate. And my first cell height is located at 0 0.1 millimeters. So what you want to use the K-Omega SST model is you want a Y plus of about five or less. Ideally one, a Y plus of one all along your car. And you can look up what a Y plus is if you're, if you're confused. You can know what it is by the end of your thesis. Um, but I definitely want that to be about one everywhere, but max five. And I noticed that for my simulations, and the air speeds that I use, you know, typical 80 kilometers per hour. Uh, this was a really good setting. Now you have to mess around with this. I spent a few weeks getting this right, that I needed eight layers, grow them at that, and the first cell height should be 0 0.1. This got my Y plus, and it gives me very good results in general um, for a decent amount of computational resources. So they are good enough for me. So you will need to experiment with this. You do not want that number of layers though to go too much above eight, to be honest, unless you have a super snazzy computer. All right, there's different types of volume mesh you can use. So we just done um, surface mesh and then we grew these prism layers. Yeah, uh, an inflation layer is a little uh, layer of prisms that grow on top of the surface of your car. So you can uh, kind of imagine that you have your surface of your car and you have these little kind of prisms, these kind of squarey things that are growing up um, off your car. Right, there's different types of volume mesh that you can use. Um, ideally, if you have a multi-core core processor, um, polyhex core is the way to roll. That's the way I don't all mine. It's kind of a new mesh and it's it's it's, it's class. Right, so 256 is going to be my max cell height. Um, you can make that smaller if you want, but 256 has worked pretty well for me. One P layer is fine and I want there to be parallel meshing. So um, what that does is I have seven cores. What that's going to do with the domain is it's going to break it into seven pieces and each core is going to mesh its own little bit. It gets it done pretty nip. Um, yep.
Cool. Away we go. Kind of wish I used eight, eight of my cores now, but who knows what would have happened. That'll do. I'll pause that. That might take a few minutes. Okay. So we seem to be finishing up now. Um, so usually when you see this create polyhedra and you see the dots, you know it's coming to an end. So it's finished here after roughly nine minutes. It's given me around 12 million cells and it tells me that 24, well, that's a pretty good. You want to keep that down to about 0 0.9 at most, but there's only happening in 24 of the cells. So what I'd usually do is I'd go in here and insert a new task, improve volume mesh and get it down to 0 0.9. Um, maximum quality so I'll just do that roughly here so improve quality now it goes the other way so if I want to get that down to 0 0.9 I need to put in 0 0.1 there if I want to get that down to 0 0.85 I put 0 0.15 in there uh, this would do 0 0.1 pretty easy but it just takes a little bit extra time and I'm not bothered grant so just delete that out I'm not going to do it so that that's pretty much it it's all mesh there so I'll just do a quick look in here so you can see some of the stuff on how this looks I showed you a picture of it at the beginning there. Um, so show cut plane. So I might show it maybe in along the X. That's quite interesting. Uh, show, show limit along the X. There we go. Okay, perfect. So look at the cells here as they grow in and along as I move in. So hopefully my computer can render this without explosions. Oh, too far, too far, too far, too far. I went too far. Oh, that looks good. Yes. Lo stop. Stop. Lovely. Okay, so you can see here, look at the inflation layers as they grow. So this is around the car surface. Look at the inflation layers, these prisms. Switches to some polys then, and then back to some hex objects. So hex is kind of these square things. The polys are the many-sided figures. So that's the idea. When it gets close to something, it switches to polys. And then as it gets out into the open space, it'll switch to hex. So that's the poly hex core mesh. It's pretty cool. And so you can see the difference here. So that there's a surface poly mesh. And you can see in the fine areas, I have finer cells. So look at the bit of, they, they look a bit skewed themselves there. So that's probably where the, where the trouble is coming from, that kind of thing, you know? All right, hopefully that, that helps and you have a bit of an idea now of how to go about this. Um, so you get some nice images for your report in here and showing that the fine edges there have this, you know, I have the curvature so that the, the cell size is reduced as they go into these fine areas. Cool. That's pretty much all that I have to say about meshing. Okay, so we'll get over and we'll talk a little bit about uh, that. So you can just click X up here. And OK, and it's automatically saved. Or you can go File, Save, and then click Close Out without saving after you've saved. But just saved, anyways. And um, this will take a few seconds to save because those files are quite big and it'll be worth a few gigabytes. After this saves, then I'll meet you back at Workbench and we'll do a little bit of simulating. Thanks.